What's up viewers, Eric from Beat Sonic. Today we have here a Lexus NX300 F Sports, the 2019 model. And we're going to be installing our new navigation DVD motion controller, the STN series onto this vehicle today. And what's different with the STN series is the navigation DVD in motion will always be active. I mean, you don't have to mess with any controls every time you, even, even when you turn off your car and turn it back on, it's always going to be active. In addition to that, this STN version is compatible with the new Lexus LC, LS, ES, and also the NX, of course, and the RC models. The other Lexus models are still compatible with our older navigation DVD motion controller, the NDS6223EP. So let's not waste any time and get started. Okay, now that we're in the car, just have three tools in hand, which are a panel removal tool, a 10 millimeter socket wrench with the socket, of course, and also a Phillip screwdriver. And the first step we're gonna do is we're gonna work around this middle area. Just raise your armrest, remove this little mirror piece here. Very, very easy, just put it aside. And we're gonna take this assembly out over here. Since I'm pretty used to doing this, I'm gonna use my hand. If you have a difficult time removing this, you could use your panel removal tool. All right, there we go. Okay, once you have this, you also notice that this piece on the side also comes off. And next step is we wanna remove these two side bolsters. These are all just being held by clips. I'm gonna start from this side, just pull it out. And also the driver's side as well. Once you have the side bolsters removed, we're gonna work on the passenger side. So let me go walk over there. Okay, using a panel removal tool, we're gonna just unclip this and just let it hang out a bit. And after we move this, just drop the glove box like that. And we're going to just get a hold of this and just pull it out. And this whole assembly is gonna come off. Okay, just like that. Okay, so we have completed the passenger side. Now let's go to the driver's side. Use your panel removal tool. I'm going to remove this piece. And after you move this, grab a hold of this vent and we're gonna pull this vent out. And once you remove this, just unclip the connector, put this aside. And there's a Phillips screw there. We are going to unscrew that. Okay, make sure you don't lose this. We're going to duck under and remove the two Phillips screws that are also holding this panel on the bottom. And once you have those removed, just hold on to this and we are gonna drop this panel. Okay, and once this is dropped, you'll find that there's a small panel here between the start button and also the panel that we just dropped. We're going to remove that. Okay, next step is to remove this cool silver trim piece that surrounds this whole entire center console. So be very careful when you remove this because as you can see, this piece is pretty big. It seems kind of fragile as well. So you do not want to damage this. So we'll just take it one step at a time. It's just being held by clips. So just be very careful about it. Okay, if you look carefully, just notice where the clips are and the angle where the clips are fastened and use that angle while pulling this panel towards you. Carefully work your way up. And this is the piece that also comes off with it. So once you remove the bottom piece up to here, you'll notice that there's two 10 millimeter bolts that's holding the monitor. And if you could already tell this piece is attached to the back side of the monitor so we also need to remove the monitor with it so let's go ahead and unbolt those two 10 millimeter bolts okay now that those 10 millimeter bolts are off go ahead and just grab a hold of the monitor like this just pull it towards you and unplug the connectors behind it and when unplugging the connectors always remember never pull on the wire make sure you grab a hold of the connector itself and pull the connector, never the wire. 
And to be easier, just grab a really large towel and place it on it so you don't scratching your dash with these sharp areas. If you have one of these tools, it's very, very handy. It's a clip removal tool. There it is. Made that very easy. So once we have the monitor off, this whole panel piece can now come off. Just like that. Okay, the next step is to remove the shift knob. Just hold down the boot. Okay. And then just turn the shift knob counterclockwise. And then raise your armrest. And then we're just going to lift this part out. It's just all gonna come off, being held by clips. Okay, just like that. And after you do this, go ahead and just leave it off to the side. Next, go ahead and press this button and let's change the gear all the way down. And once you have that, let's remove this top piece over here. Just grab it and just pull it towards you. It's being held by clips. And there's two connectors behind it. Now, we are ready to take this radio out. It's just being held by two 10 millimeter bolts. Okay, once we have that removed, let's put some towels over here. Thicker the better. And we're gonna pull this out and then set it on the towel and work on the connectors behind it. Okay, and as you can see, if you look back here, you wanna focus on these three large connector. On the NX, for a 2019 NX, there's one's white, black, and gray. And out of these three, there's only two connectors that you're going to work on, which is, if you're facing it down my view, it's the one all the way on the right and also the middle. The left one over here is also a 28 pin, so don't get this one mixed up with the other 28 pin. So make sure you have the right connectors, because if you're doing the wrong connector, it won't fit. And if you force it, you can break the connector and that's gonna be very costly. So we don't want that. We'll start off with this one first. So once you grab a hold of this 28 pin, if you look very carefully, you'll notice that there's a partition between the top and the bottom. And we are going to break this apart into two. Use a very small flat head screwdriver or some plastic device and you'll find that there's a little small opening. We're gonna gently put it between there and they'll break it apart into two. When you're doing this, be very careful. Don't be forceful. You don't wanna do anything to deform the connector because if you do, things will not fit in correctly later. And if it doesn't fit in correctly, then we have a big issue. So be very, very careful with this. Um, get the smallest flathead size and it should fit right in the hole. Just like that. And by doing so, it will break this into halves. Okay. Just like that. And just leave it disconnected. Grab a hold of our module. And on our module, you'll find that we have that 28 pin connector half the bottom half of it, and we're gonna combine that bottom half to the top half of the factory 28 pin connector. And be very gentle when you put it together because you want it to be very precise. And it'll go in very effortlessly like right that. Very, very easy. And then the top half of it, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the loose top half of the 28 pin that comes with the kit and we are going to connect it together just like that and be very gentle comes on very easily once you have completed this 28 pin connector side we need to take off this factory electric tape to give us a little more slack to be able to connect our module and then the part that is connected to our module is gonna to connect to the radio, and the part that is coming from the vehicle is going to connect to our module on this side. So let's do that now, just like that. And the other side will go into the radio. And because we use OEM constructed connectors, everything will go in very smoothly. 
Okay. And then next, we're going to work on the middle 30 pin connector. Okay. And same for this 30 pin connector. We're going to break this into halves. And then for this one too, you're gonna wanna remove the very bottom row. Okay, once again, be very, very gentle. We don't wanna deform the connector in any way. Okay. Okay, once you have this removed, we're going to work on this bottom connector here. Go ahead and flip this around this way so that if you look at the pins, the very right pin is going to be pink and it's going to be open and then green, red, gray, and pink again. And counting from the right side, the empty pin, the pin number two, we're going to insert something in there. Okay, and then the, the green wire with the pin attached to it on our module is what goes inside there. The flat part on the bottom will face bottom as well. And the part that has a little clip sticking out, that's going to be your top. And we're going to insert it directly into the hole. And you'll hear it click. With no force, it will naturally go in. And you could confirm by just wiggling around a little bit to make sure it's there. If you accidentally stick it into a different hole, it's going to be very difficult to pull it back out. And you're going to risk damaging the connector. So make sure you have this part done correct and be very very careful that it's going into the right slot and once you have that on we are going to sandwich this piece back together and once again make sure everything's lined up perfectly before you press it down and it will go back on effortlessly all right so everything behind the radio is all connected and the next step is we have to get this longer cable connected to your auxiliary part and let's route this wire in a way where it won't be near any moving parts especially your shifter let's try to follow the factory wires okay and if you like you could use some zip ties and zip tie it to the factory wire location Remove the connector and we are going to daisy chain it. The car side to our module and the module side to the vehicle. All right, so once this is routed, all you have to do is reverse order what we just did, put all the panels back and we're good to go. All right, so let's go for a test drive to confirm that everything is working as it should. As you can tell already, while we're driving, the DVD normally will stop playing, but it's still playing. So if you want a music video playing in the background while you're driving, it's also a good thing. Or if you want to show your DVD to your passenger, you can do so. But I highly advise you not to drive while watching a video because that is very, very dangerous. It's very dangerous for everybody else on the road as well. Click on search. You could type your destination, everything will work fine. And now you could do this without pulling over your vehicle. You could just keep driving and have your passenger input the address for you. The route guidance will start now. So the passengers can watch the DVD and you can listen to your turn-by-turn -turn guidance. Make a legal U-turn ahead. Like I said earlier, the benefit of this new kit is it's always bypassed. Everything is bypassed. You'll never have to run into any grayed out features. Your Everything works. You don't have to press any buttons. Very, very easy and very seamless. Plug and play install and still the same price as our previous model. Another thing to mention is on our previous model, we had a timer with our navigation in motion controller. For this version, there's no timer. So it's going to continue to be bypassed when you press the call button four times until you press it four times again to get out of the bypass mode. 
it's going to continue. Most of you guys are probably going to want to just have it always bypassed. So in order to get into the setting, first turn off your vehicle. And while holding the call button, we are going to turn on your car. Just keep holding it. And if you hold on to it long enough, you'll hear a really long beep, just as you heard it right now. And once you heard a beep, that means we're in program mode. So once you're in program mode, you press the call button one more time, you heard two long beeps. Two beeps mean that it's in automatic navigation DVD motion mode, where your car will always be bypassed. Navigation and DVD or anything that gets created on the screen, it will always be bypassed. Press the call button one more time. You hear one beep, that's default, which is you have to press the call button four times every time you want to bypass or you want to get out of bypass mode. Press it one more time. You hear two beeps one more time. That means it's automatic mode again. Once you select the mode you like, just go ahead and press and hold the call button. And you hear a really long beep. That tells you that you have now exited the setup mode and as you know we went ahead and we set it to two beeps which means the car is going to be bypassed all the time all right guys well that concludes our installation and demonstration video of our stn series navigation dvd and motion bypass if you have any questions email us at info at and don't forget to subscribe below thank you